This training video is brought to you by K-Alliance. K-Alliance is the 21st century's educational corporation, specializing in the most comprehensive enterprise training solutions, ranging from e-learning to instructor-led training. Press play for success. After watching this video, be sure to become a Facebook fan to receive the latest updates, promotions, and course releases. You can also subscribe to our YouTube channel to preview the latest desktop, soft skills, and IT training videos. Now that we understand the concept of server migration, we want to take a look at the Windows Server Migration Tools. These utilities are provided by Microsoft to ease the process of migration and minimize the need for technical know-how. Uh, that just means that we, you know, don't necessarily, it's not going to require us to perform each individual manual step. You know, migrating a server is generally the process of moving data and settings from one server to another, but it's a tedious process. It's slow. It involves a lot of different components, and so therefore it's prone to errors. And that's where the migration tools come in, and they are to, to help us with that process. It makes it a fairly straightforward and easy process. I can achieve the migration of both data and services from supported operating systems. Now there's where we may have somewhat of a problem. And the source computer has to be run in Windows Server 2003 SP2 or later, although it can be running standard enterprise or data center editions. If we're moving from any other servers, it's going to be a manual approach. So yes, these migration tools are there and they're very helpful, but it is a uh, it, it is something that's only available when coming from 2003 or later. The only destination operating system that's supported for the Windows Server migration tools is the R2 system. Okay, both full and server core are supported, but this is something that is new to Windows Server 2008 R2. Uh, the install process would go as follows. The administrator would install the tools on the destination machine. This is the server running Windows Server 2008 R2, and that comprises, uh, or those tools really comprise Windows PowerShell commandlets, as well as the uh, smigrationdeploy.exe command line tool. If the source computer is not R2, we would be copying the deployment folder, which contains all the installer files, to that source computer. If it is R2, then you don't need to, to do that. Uh, the administrator would then use the copied folder to install all the tools on the source computer. Now keep in mind, these tools will require PowerShell 1.0 and the .NET Framework version 2.0 or later. PowerShell is built on top of the .NET Framework. It's not an issue if usually if you have Windows 2008, you can just install it as a feature. If you have Server 2003, you will need to download uh, PowerShell and install it on that machine before running the installer files from the deployment share that has been copied over. Once, once we've done that, there are various roles that we said could be migrated. Branch cache, only if you're coming from R2, DHCP, file services, Hyper-V, the IP configuration of the server, so settings that can be migrated, local users and groups, usually not that relevant or applicable since we're typically dealing with domain computers, but could be, uh, routing or remote access services, and WSUS, Windows Server Update Services, so long as it's running version 3.0 with Service Pack 2, which if you've updated it, it would be, then you can migrate those. Now, there's also a file server migration toolkit that can be used to migrate the file services. Uh, a lot of what's going on here is behind the scenes and these, uh, you know, the, the PowerShell commands and things will help us in the migration process. But I think a lot of this is easier when we actually see it. So we're going to take a look at the process first of installing the server migration tools, and then we'll get into specifically deploying and migrating file and print services.